Okay, so could you tell us your name? <laughs> oh, uh, that's, that's a challenge. The name I was born with is different from the name I carry now. I'm Jack Barsky. And the name you were born with? Aye, this uh, German name, Albrecht Dietrich. Aha. Mm. Now, you have had a few interesting, uh, very, very interesting uh, aspects to your life. Uh, and you actually worked for the Russian government? No, yeah, sure. I worked for the KGB, so yes, as a quote-unquote a contractor, because I wasn't a Soviet citizen, I was East German. And uh, as an East German, I couldn't get a military rank, but I, I, I did work for the KGB, yes. And what specifically was your job? I uh, was undercover in the United States, specifically in, in uh, New York City. Uh, ten years I worked as a... At, I infiltrated America as a born, quote-unquote, born American citizen. We stole an identity of uh, A. Jack Barsky, who died uh, early in life. Uh, and so I lived the life of a normal American, not quite normal, but, you know, I. I was a uh, sort of a sleeper as well as a part-time agent. And what did the Russian government want you to acquire? Oh, the, the most important thing for them, and this is not something I knew right then and there, but uh, the most important thing for them was the fact that I was there, a uh, sleeper agent, somebody who, who is, uh, you know, last line of defense if all the other spies, the diplomats, are kicked out of the country. And I, I was supposed to collect political intelligence, no sabotage, nothing nothing crazy with weapons or anything like that. It uh, wasn't super successful, but I'm glad about this now. <clears throat> so what do you think <clears throat> might have been the most significant piece of information that you acquired and passed on to them? See, th this is always a, uh, a question that I hate to answer because I honestly don't know. They don't tell you. You know, uh, you you send information over, you profile people that could be uh, subject to <clears throat> um, uh, to uh, recruitment, but nobody ever tells you whether it was good or not, and what was good. Apparently, I did well in their eyes because they gave me the second highest decoration uh, that the Soviet Union gave out in those days. So, honestly, I can't, you know, I'm not barking. This is, this is the... These are the rules of conspiracy, you know. You, you, you just get enough, enough, enough information that is necessary to do your job. <clears throat> and then how did the U.S. government find out about it? Oh, they found out about, not, anyway, I'd say about six years after I decided to you know, quit the business and sort of withdraw and live a normal life as an American. Uh, there was a defector of, uh, who had worked in the uh, KGB archives who had a whole lot of information that he shared with the British intelligence. And amongst those bits and pieces of information was the name Jack Barsky. And that triggered an investigation, and then the FBI found me. The FBI discovered you. And then once they discovered you, what action did they take? Well, they, it took them four years to investigate me. And I would, my case was, for quite some time, the number one case counterintelligence on the FBI list because they knew one thing about me, that I was an extremely well-trained agent and that I had survived 10 years on the cover, so they had no clue. Was I still active? Was I a sleeper? Uh, what, are they, what are we going to do with this guy? And so they very, were very careful. They even bought the house next door to take a, you know, keep an eye on me. And eventually, when they determined it was time to... to uh, introduce themselves, they did so, and uh, uh, that was a, the beginning of my next step in life to become a legalized, bona fide American. And they let you do that without taking any criminal actions against you? There was you. none ever taken. This is not unusual in the realm of intelligence. You catch an agent, if that agent has enough value to you uh, as a free operator, then you allow that agent to be free. And I still had enough residual knowledge that uh, I was more valuable to the United States government as 
uh, a cooperative ex-agent than somebody that, who they might throw in jail. And then 60 Minutes had you or Yeah, I was on 60 Minutes. It was an interesting, uh, they, they had a, uh, their number one team. They made a massive production out of it. It, it was a double segment. The, uh, the, interv the interviewer was Steve Croft. Between Steve Croft and, and Dragan Mihailovic, the producer, they had about a dozen uh, Emmys. And uh, they, they even uh, re uh, repeated the show twice. That means CBS made quite a bit of money. They wouldn't have repeated it if, if they didn't have good, uh, good uh, ratings the first time it was uh, sent. What do you think was the most uh, interesting <clears throat> fact or group of facts that were revealed on that show. Oh, there's two of them. And, this is my, uh, and they, they're somewhat unusual. The first one I already hinted at this, uh, uh, I, uh, maybe not in this video, uh, I became good friends with the investigator, with the lead agent on my case. We're still friends. And he was in the show and he said some very nice things about me. Uh, we got to know each other very well. You know, he, he grilled me for six weeks and he knew more about my life than I could remember. Uh, but the other one, which is the pivot point in my life, is uh, what made me break up with the Russians. And it wasn't the economics, it wasn't the good life in the United States, it wasn't a change of heart that I already had become an anti-communist that came later. It was my love for an 18-month-old child. So when they when they called me back, the Russians called me back in 1988. Uh, they didn't know that I had a child here, and uh, so I I said I'm not going, and I told them. And this usually gets a uh, uh, when I present my story to audiences, it gets a laugh, and because I told them that I had HIV/AIDS, and that would uh, the only place where I could possibly get some treatment would be the United States, and they bought that. Uh, just to make the, the point here, my daughter, who is a beautiful young lady, she's tall, athletic, uh, has the biggest eyes that you could ever imagine on a person. She also appeared on that TV program, and uh, and when she showed up and it lit up the screen, you know, prior to that it was a bunch of old men talking, right, and all of a sudden this is a young pretty lady. And, and uh, so that, that's the unusual aspect of my spy life. I had two families. I had one in Germany and I had one in the United States. And all of a sudden I had to make a decision. And that wasn't easy. Wow. And your wife here, what was her response to this whole thing? Oh, that was a big problem. We, you know, uh, first of all, this is another unusual aspect of my story. I... I was illegally in the country, but I had established myself with good documentation. She was also illegal. I met her, I dated her, and then I tried to help her out by getting married and giving her, uh, you know, the ability to get a green card in this country. So, and then she became pregnant and we stayed married. The, and But the marriage wasn't really that great and we were arguing a lot and one day I decided I'll just disclose to her what about my past and the risks I had taken to stay with her and our daughter and I told her you know what I used to be a Russian spy and I defied the Russian command to return home because of you. Uh, the problem was that my house was bugged already at that time by the FBI and so they had my uh, my my statement, uh, my uh, confession on tape. <laughs> on top of it, it also backfired with her because she immediately mm -hmm. connected. I, you know, this was, I don't know whether it's female thinking or whatever, but it was completely different from mine. She said, ah, but if you're not legal, that means I'm not legal. Uh, and so it, 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 as I said, it backfired. And and this started so sort of the 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 end of the marriage because uh, she was already a very non-trusting person and now she knew that she couldn't ever trust me again because I lived the big lie. And you're still uh, connected to your daughter. Oh yeah, oh absolutely. How old is she? She's 30 years old now. And what's she do? 
Uh, she uh, currently runs a, 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 um, a ther therapy center, cryogenics and stuff like that, because she's always been in athletics. She bodybuilds and stuff like that. Is that in Atlanta? No, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's in Austin, Texas. All right. And uh, she also participated in a participated in a TV production for A and E on families of spies and stuff like that. Very mm -hmm. photogenic, uh, wow. young lady. And what made you decide to come to Atlanta? Oh, it was economics. Uh, you know, his cost of living is a lot lower here. I come from upstate New York, but uh, you know, now that I'm I've been here for a year and a half, you know, I I figured I should have moved here twenty years ago. It's a, it's a lovely place. And what do you do as far as making a living now? Well, you know, I, I wrote a book. I made some money out of the book. Uh, I just came, came back from Europe where the book uh, appeared in Polish, Swedish, and German. Uh, I make a little bit of money there. But I also um, uh, make public appearances in corporate and sometimes in churches, and I get a little money out of that. And the title of the book... Is Deep Undercover, Deep Undercover, that's an American title. And who published it? Published by Tyndale. Tyndale, I see. Mm. And uh, if you were to summarize in a sentence or two the message in the movie, in the book rather, what would that be? Well, <clears throat> since I, I tell people um, all the time that this book is not a spy story, it's a love story. It's about... Uh, uh, Love that was not extended to a young boy when 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 I grew up. It was about the hardening against love. It was uh, the love that I uh, that I wanted to share with somebody, but I couldn't do it as a young person. I I messed it all up, and then the 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 competing love between sort of like self. And others, self meaning I, I was so in love with myself because I was so darn successful that uh, you know my career and my my mission was more important than any, anybody and anything else. And then all of a sudden, boom! I was hit by unconditional love for this child, and that changed my life completely. And in the end, I got another opportunity to get it right because I have a seven-year-old now. And, I have a wonderful young uh, young wife, and uh, I'm doing my best, the best I can, to really love him the way somebody should should be loved, and which is also important. Also, uh, be open to receiving love, because that's in some respect harder for me than giving it. So, bottom line is, this would be a great movie. That's what you say. I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people would say it. And in Georgia, they make a lot of movies. So uh, the first step is getting some uh, people who are very interested in getting involved in this in one way or another to watch this video. <laughs> and any other statement that you want to make at the end of the video? Well, uh, I... I have the ability to just step outside of myself and look at the story. It is very rich in content, uh, without a doubt. And this is not just me saying it, but also others that, that, that whose uh, opinion uh, is, is important. I mean, 60 Minutes wouldn't have done the story unless, and, and that's a credible source for. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, you say movie, and I'm always thinking if you want to do the whole book, it's a series. Uh, but you know, if you if you want to do a two-hour movie, you need to take something out of it and only uh, pretty much uh, uh, focus on the core, because there's lots and lots of side stories that uh, that I couldn't even tell in the book because it's other people's stories and how they relate to me, such as you know my mother, uh, how she became the hard person that, that she was and the one that couldn't love and hug me and mm. kiss me, uh, my, my German wife and how she was looking for me, or my mother as, as, she, as she didn't know what happened to me, uh, my, my, uh, my wife, that my, my American wife and my German wife and all these stories that, that I could not tell, they're not my stories. 
but that's why I'm always thinking this this is, this is there's enough material for a series. Or look at uh, you know Joe Riley, the FBI agent, how he gets called from you know headquarters and say we got a guy here. You got to figure out what's 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 going on with him and the preparation of of apprehending me. They had a whole big team and it was a big operation. All of this you know lends itself for more than just telling my story. That's just my idea. I'm not a creative genius. <laughs> well, it's very good. I think you definitely got it all in a nutshell. And this is something that uh, we're eager to explore. Oh, explore away. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Eric.